On today's show, we're going to be looking at the Pixco EF to M43, that is the Canon EF mount to Micro Four Thirds adapter. This one is the one with the glass in it. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show on photography and video and live streaming and all things photo video-ish related here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. It's a live show. Did you know it was live? It's a live show, which means if you're not watching this live, you could be. And it's a lot of fun when you watch live because you get to participate in the comments. I see you over here. You chit chat. You see me fumbling around in the morning like a complete fool. And only those who watch live get to see those. And those who watch live get to participate in the comments, the chit chat, the Q&A, which we will do at the end of this show. So let's get started. What are we talking about today? This little thing here, mm -hmm, this guy is from a company called Pixco. It is the EF to M43 adapter. Let's go for a little close-up shot here. It is again from a company called Pixco. You can see it says right there on the tin. EF, that is the Canon EF to M43, that is from Micro Four Thirds. This is the one that has glass in it, as you can see, because my hand is out of focus. I would show you that I can't poke my finger through it, but that would be self-defeating and put fingerprints on it. It does have, this is quite cool, a built-in stepless aperture, which is very good because you'll notice that what it does not have is any kind of electronic contacts. So you have zero communication between the lens and your camera. So when you take a lens like this Canon 50 millimeter F1.2 lens, which is what I'm gonna put on, this is, when I was shooting Canon, this was definitely one of my favorite lenses. It's a, it's a beautiful lens, very sharp, very fast, very shallow depth of field, and <laughs> very heavy, not very expensive, but very nice lens. Um, when you put this, which is covered in electronic context, on this, which is not, you lose all communication. It's like Tom, Uncle, not Uncle Tom, Brother Tom, so Major Tom, that's it, all communication, gone. And um, <laughs> no, Uncle Tom is something completely different. And so the camera doesn't know what the aperture is set to on here. It cannot control the aperture on here. It cannot control the focus on here. You are talking a complete and total disconnect. It is like putting a mechanical lens, an old fashioned, totally mechanical lens on your camera. One place you'll run into an issue is if this lens that you want to put on is a drive-by wire lens, meaning that it is focused by the electronics in here. If it does not have a mechanical focus ring, you cannot use it with this, which is a shame because my other favorite lens from my Canon collection, Canon Days, was the 85 F1.4, 2, 4, something. Really fast, really big, twice the size of this thing, uh, and it very shallow depth, really, really beautiful but it is a focus by wire. So I cannot use that with this. I put it on here and the focus ring just spins. I can't actually focus it. This one, however, is mechanical. So this one will work, but you still cannot control the aperture in here because that is electronic. Therefore, you need the aperture here. So if you wanna be able to stop it down, that's what this does for you. So that's cool. So that's how that works. Um, Cost-wise, oh shoot, Ryan, look up the cost for me and tell me because I totally forgot to do that. We're going to link to the page down below where this thing comes from. You can buy this on Amazon. You can buy it direct from Pixco um, or some other site in China, what they have asked that, uh, that we show you. Um, which, by the way, I should point out, Pixco did send this out to me on my request for review. And... Um, and the idea is that it is essentially a cheap speed booster. That's kind of like this is a follow-up to Friday show. Where we're looking at a cheap speed booster for the M42. That's the screw mount lenses. This is the same idea, different company, for the Canon lenses. And uh, the idea there is that you get a wider field of view. You get the, well, maybe not the full field of view, and this is exactly what we're going to test in a moment here, of this original lens onto here. If we were to take one of these adapters that didn't have any glass in it, and I did that. I have one from the same company, Pixco. We looked at that one a while ago. We'll link to that up here. You can check that show out if you want to. It's really, really inexpensive because it is literally just a tube, kind of like an extension tube, uh, just switching the mount from Canon to Micro Four Thirds. And it works, but the problem is that you are doubling your focal length. It's just like taking any lens and putting it on Micro Four Thirds, whatever the lens focal length is on the lens. If it says 50, if it says 100, if it says 25, you double that to get what you would get on Micro Four Thirds. The idea behind this is that you are getting some of that back. Now, it is not a full 2x. It doesn't actually say what the uh, magnification ratio is on this. However, we're going to see that it is somewhere in between nothing and everything which is a really technical way of looking at it. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna put it on. I've got behind me a Canon 5D Mark II. I believe that's what this thing was. Yep, 5D Mark II next to my Lumix GH5. And we're going to put the same lens on both cameras. Take a look at Betty back here. And you'll see as well, not only is Betty sitting there with missing half of her body, don't ask, uh, you'll see a focus target in the back. The focus target in the back is there so that we can do a bokeh comparison, a shallow depth of field comparison. 
Uh, for the lo those watching live, you won't be able to see them side by side. For those watching the edited version, I will put those side by side so you can see them clearly, see what the difference is. Um, we are also going to see a difference in the field of view. So you'll see what you get off the 50 on the Canon at a true 50, and then what we get it uh, get on the uh, on the Lumix camera, which is not going to be quite 50, but it's also not going to be 100. So that is that. Before we jump into that part of it, let me just remind you of the way that this show operates. We operate on a promise, on a promise, a premise, something called value for value. If you feel like you have gained value from today's show, then I would most certainly appreciate it if you consider putting value back. Head over to photojoseph.com support. There's a lot of different ways to do it. One of the best ways to do it, and I got to update my card to really reflect this, one of the best ways to do it, other than shopping the affiliate store, which is lovely, is to consider become a member of photojoseph.com. So we have a membership program on there that includes, that allows you access to unlimited uh, streaming of the live training videos, as well as unlimited streaming of the business of the business interview series, which we just started, did one on Caleb Pike last week or week before, whatever that was, and uh, we've got a bunch more coming up, which is going to be really fun. In fact, I'm trying, Kenneth, if you're watching right now, I'm putting you on the hook here. A buddy of mine is coming out from Hong Kong. He is a photographer in Hong Kong. He is going to be here in the U.S. for a little while. He's visiting me next week, and um, I asked him if he'd like to be on the show, and he said, like, I don't know, maybe, and I'm like, good, you're in. So uh, we're going to get him on, I think. We're going to try, and that'll be live. That'll be fun. They'll be here in the studio. Okay. So those programs, those shows are awesome, and that is part of the, uh, the photojustice.com membership. Uh, Ryan's got the price up here for me. Thank you very much, Ryan. It is $99.99 for this adapter, so really inexpensive. So if you have old Canon glass laying around, and you have switched over to Micro Four Thirds, and you're looking for a way to utilize some of that old glass, this is what it's all about. Okay, 99 bucks. Let's, uh, let's do this thing. Let me switch over to this view here, and we're going to start with just the Canon lens on the Canon camera. It's so funny. I fired this thing up this morning. I'm like, how does this thing work again? I don't remember. And I turn on the live view mode, and we will be able to see through. There it is. And it looks like we need a little focus on there. So, you know, you get so used to focus peaking and punching into focus and all those really cool things you get on mirrorless that I'm like looking through the can going, I can't, I, is it even in focus? I have no idea. Burns Tech, my goodness, look at you. I love it when you do this. Burns, you are a beautiful person. Where's my uh, comments? There we go. Burns has just contributed $20. Lunch on you, you try to do this when you can. Always great content and information. Thank you, Burns, I really appreciate that. Um, I will, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use that to take my kids out to lunch today because they're here, they're home, they're I'm sure still asleep, but um, I will take them out to lunch. Thank you, Burns, you rock, okay. Let's go back to this. So we're looking at this. We're looking through the Canon. So that is the Canon field of view. You can see what you're seeing. You can see, this is wide open. Let me double check that. It is wide open at f1.2. In fact, I think I can punch that up on here. It's funny, it punches into the display, but there you go. So we're at f1.2. We'll go back to the bigger view. And I'm going to just wander around back here a bit so you can see, you can see what the uh, kind of bokehliciousness is of this lens at this point. Um, and width. Let's see here. So where are we? We're, we're pretty far over. I should probably like, here, I'm going to move something here. Kind of mark my position there. So there's one edge of the field of view. And we're going to go back to the other side. This is very high tech, I realize. Mark this field of view. So, okay, right about there. All right, so that's good. So there's, it's a pretty wide, I mean, it's a 50 millimeter lens. You know, this is what you would expect. That's, it's a 50 millimeter view. So that's that. So you got that marked in your mental brain for how much bokeh there was. For those who are watching edited, we'll do a side by side momentarily. And now let's swap them out. So let me take this guy and put this on here and figure out where the dot is on that. Oh, this one has a dot that's actually easily seeable and recognizable, unlike the camera uh, adapter we were looking at last week, which was not so easy to see. And let's swap this thing over. This is a bizarre combination, isn't it? Taking this huge Canon lens and slapping it onto the GH5. It's like it's bigger than the whole front of the camera. It's kind of funny. All right, and let's fire this thing up, and now we can see what that looks like. Let's, uh, let's see here. Well, definitely a much tighter field of view. Um, I'm going to take advantage of my focus peaking, make sure we are in focus on her. Looking pretty, oh, I see none of the displays coming out that you're not seeing the focus peaking, but that's okay. And I'm actually gonna move, well, I guess she's centered. That's probably about what I want. That does look pretty tight, doesn't it? I don't know how much we're gaining from the, uh, from the speed booster-ish on there, but there we go. So now you can see the beautiful bokeh, really nice, soft, shallow depth field back there. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, obviously a fair amount tighter for sure. But there you go. What I think what I'll have to do, that looks nice though. I mean, that really does look nice. That almost, gosh, I wonder. Now we're going to have to do, the, we're going to see it side by side. It almost looks like we're getting an even shallower depth of field. 
I guess that would make sense, wouldn't it? If it's a tighter field of view with the aperture is still a one, two, maybe that does make sense. Huh. I don't know. These kind of optical mechanical number of things escape me, but it's, um, it's great. So it works. It works and it's beautiful. It is definitely tighter than 50. We're splitting the difference. We're somewhere in the middle. We're definitely getting that really shallow depth of field. We're getting a wider field of view than we were with the version without the optics in it. And yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. I think for a hundred bucks, it's worth it. Now you may remember when we looked at the one, the Pixco one that did not have the optics in it, I said, I had to say, it's not really worth buying. And it was at least it wasn't for me because there were no, there were no lenses in my repertoire that I didn't already have replicated or recreated on the Lumix side, which you know weighed a quarter of the amount and had full autofocus and everything else. Now though, this is worth it to be able to use specifically this lens. I don't know that I would use any of the other Canon lenses that I've got. I wish I could use the 85, but it's drive by wire, so I can't. This is probably the only one I would use, but now I have it. Now I have a combination that will allow me to use that 51.2, super shallow depth of field, getting about a 40 millimeter and micro four thirds or an 80 mil full equivalent. Yeah, I think we're doing all right there. I think we're doing good. So there you go. That, my friends, is that. All right, let's move into the Q&A section of the show. See what you guys think, see what you guys want to say, see what you guys want to ask. We will, uh, let's just head on over. It's time for that now. <laughs> 